Good afternoon, good afternoon. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm glad to greet you on this Monday. Thank God for this Monday. Wow, we're halfway through the month. It's March the 15th, and God has been good. So won't you just join me in giving God praise, honor, and glory for a brand new day. Won't you come on? I'm going to move rapidly into our um, meditation today. Um, glad to see you, um, Valerie and Georgina, Georgiana. Thank you so much for joining me. Sister Wanda Singletary, let's talk soon. Good to see you. Sister Ruby Ramsey, always good to see you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Sister Marva Harding, wishing you a successful trip. Okay, a couple of notices and announcements. Thelma Phillips, good to see you. Sister Elizabeth King, good to see you. All right, um, thank you for joining us on this past Sunday. It was a wonderful day. We um, worship God in spirit and in truth. Our young people participated and we also celebrate the Holy Communion. So I'm just delighted at what God is doing, even in this pandemic season of things that are still a bit uncertain. But I thank God because God is faithful. God is immutable. He never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is perfection and we're striving to be more like him. Thank those of you who joined us virtually. So next Sunday, next Sunday is our annual men's day. And so we're still trying to make sure that we hit our targets and celebrate those very important days in the life of our church, even in this season. So please be supportive for, to our men. We have a guest preacher, my good friend, the Reverend Larry Camp. Uh, he and I actually were in high school together. So he's going to be our preacher um, for that time. You know, our service starts at 1045. And as usual, we'll have you out not later than 1215. So we'll look to see you there. Please join us on Wednesday for our Bible study. I do have two guest presenters that will be presenting. They did call me and I confirmed them and affirmed them. They'll do a wonderful job. So please join us um, for our Bible study on Wednesday. And let's also prepare and look forward to our walk run for the men that will be this Saturday in Prospect Park and we'll be out there at eight o'clock. I'm not sure that I'll be walking or running. I have to just see how it goes, but please come and support and please let's sponsor our men and let's support them as they continue to try to also figure out how to raise funds to share God's love in a tangible way, even in this pandemic season wherein we find ourselves. I know you would do that. And Salem, you know that I love you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your love. Let's keep on keeping on. All right. The word for today, um, let me just tell you last week's word. Um, and if you forget a word or something, just let me know. I'll be happy to share it with you. Um, um, on Friday, we talked about being encouraged. We talked about being encouraged was our word. Today's word is affirmation. Affirmation. Affirmation is the assertion that something that exists is true or we need to be affirmed that we are somebody in Christ. We all need a sense of affirmation to know that we are somebody. I talk to people sometimes and in this, these seasons, sometimes we feel, oh my God, you know, I'm just not that important. And we do have a sense of humility that we should have. We should humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. But at the same time, Humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, knowing that God is God all by himself. But we are somebody. The fact that you're alive, the fact that God breathed into you, his divinity, his power makes us somebody. God, the Bible says in Genesis, breathed into man or humankind and we became a living soul. Psalm 8, what is man that God is mindful of him, made him a little lower than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. So I don't care how you feel. I don't care how people try to make you feel. I want you to know that you are somebody. That's what it means to be affirmed. Be affirmed and assured, assured of this truth that God loves you. So I want to just give a couple of affirmations 
I actually found 50 affirmation and more than that in the Bible. But this, so sometimes, you know, as you're going along and you're feeling less than, you need to have some affirmations that you speak to yourself because it is true and it'll give you that kind of spiritual vitamin that you need to move forward. Now are we the sons and daughters of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but when we, sh but when he shall appear, we shall be like him. So here, I'm going to give you four, and then I want to, well, five affirmations, and then I want to park in our scripture for today. So here's one that you can always say that can lift you. I am sufficient in God. You'll find the context for that in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, where Paul reminds us that our sufficiency is in God. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and also um, chapter 3, verse 5. Um, I will fear no evil. Um, Psalm 23, um, Psalm 23, I believe, um, verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. Um, God is my helper. Psalm 121. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. Then, of course, this one we all know. And this one gives me strength sometimes when I think I can't make it. Right? Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So a lesson for the day where I want to park is in Psalm 116. Okay, that's where we're going to park. And the affirmation there is, my voice is heard by God. My voice is heard by God. So these are some things you can remember. I am sufficient in God. I will fear no evil. My voice is heard by God. God is my helper. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So let's look at Psalm 116, which is the one that I did my meditation this morning. And I'm just going to unpack nine verses very, very quickly. And here it is. Let me see if I can find it here. The psalmist says, okay, God hears my voice. Here it is. In Psalm 116, verses 1 and 2. And so I took notes. If you're taking notes, God hears. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy, because he turned his ear to me. I will call on him as long as I live. Why do we love God? Because he hears us, and he hears our cry for mercy. And the psalmist David says, and because of that, and because God turns his ear to hear me, he says, I will call on him as long as I live. Sometimes we talk to people, they don't hear us. I don't want to give too many personal examples because I get in trouble, but sometimes people speak to me and, you know, you can be distracted and you don't really hear what they're saying. You're not really paying attention even though you're trying to, but you don't really process what they're saying. That's never the case with God. When we talk to God, he bends his ear towards us individually and collectively. The other thing that I want you to know that we get out of this psalm that David would have us, and he would know this because he was so many times confronted with death. I mean, his son Absalom tried to take the throne from him. Um, Saul, who had adopted him, to come and live with him and to mentor him, tried to kill him because he became jealous of the popularity that David began to have. And David says that God will deliver. He says, the cords of death entangled me and the anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress, distress and sorrow. Things began to happen in his life where people turned against him. And then he says in verse 4, Then I called on the name of the Lord. The Lord saved me. God will deliver you. How many of you have been sick, but you got well, you were down, but God lifted you up? 
You were depressed, but he gave you hope. Then I want to share with you that not only does the Lord love, not only will he deliver you, but the Lord will protect. Verses 5 and 6. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unweary. When I was brought low, he saved me. I come to close now, and I just simply want to say, I don't know about you, but I made this decision that I'm going to serve the Lord for as long as I live. And then even after, I'll be thanking him for how he brought me, for how he kept me, and for the fact that he's never left me. Verses 7 through 9 now as we close. So turn to the psalm in your own meditation. May it speak to you as it spoke to me today. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, Lord, have delivered me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. You can just keep on reading, but you know, as long as I live, the psalmist says, I will call on the name of the Lord because he heard my voice. God hears, God delivers, God protects. And because of that, I'm going to love him and praise him for as long as I live. So as you are trying to negotiate life in this time that we're in, find some affirmations that affirms for you that you're not alone, that God is with you. I am sufficient in God. I will fear no evil. He heard my voice. God is my helper. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God bless you. God keep you. Let's thank God for his word that speaks to us while we yet try to understand it. Let's go to God in prayer. To God, for this time together, we give you thanks and for your word that's so pregnant with truth and power that it gives birth as we yet try to understand it. We thank you. Thank you for affirming us and confirming us and making us aware, afresh and anew, that in you we are somebody. Because you breathed in us and we became living souls. Because the psalmist reminds us that we're somebody because you made us just a little lower than the angels. We're not angels, but just a little lower than angels. You crowned us with glory and honor. And so help us to know that even when we're weary, when we are distressed, that we're somebody in you. Bless those that are under the sound of my voice. Let them know that they cannot fall beyond your tender care and keeping. Because great is he that's in them than he that is in the world. We thank you, we praise you, we honor you, and we magnify you. This is our prayer on this first day of a new work week. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much. I tell you morning by morning, new mercies I see all I've needed. His hands have provided. Great is God's faithfulness. Have a wonderful day. I look to see you on tomorrow at the same time. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance, grant you his peace and his love, and you're going in and you're going out, and you're down sitting and you're uprising, till we shall stand in his presence through Jesus the Christ, to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. God bless you. Good to see you, my vet. I hope you're feeling well. I'll call you soon. Sister Mary Joseph, thank you. Sister Shirley Millard, Leroy, I hope all is going well with you. Maxine, Thank you always for your inspirational messages. Sister Carolyn Dan Glade, we'll talk soon. Sister Beverly Ward, have a wonderful day. Kay Warman, how are you? Good to see all of you. Let me get on with my day. You go ahead. It's cool outside, but hey, when you feel the wind against your face, you know that you're alive and the God is still moving in our lives and in the face and in the space of God's incredible earth that he allows to be our dwelling place. See you tomorrow.